going on guys? Welcome back to the Swanky Cat Productions channel. If you're new here, I try to put a video out like this at least once a week. Today I am about, what, an hour and 15 minutes into the exact type of adventure that got me into heavy dual sports and mid-weight ATV bikes years ago. I am just about, I guess, an hour north of the Wausau area right now, headed for the Harrison Hills ATV trails. I kind of like to take the back roads to get here. Obviously, these bikes are more than highway capable, but I prefer the back roads and the scenery on the way up here rather than the grind of the highway. Back when I was just kind of getting into off-road riding, this is really the closest place that I could get to and I definitely made a couple attempts to, to make it up here on my DRC 400 back in the day. And it, it would do it, but I would end up spending just about as much time on the road as I would off the road. And when I bought that DRZ 400, I actually sold a CBR 600RR to purchase it. So obviously there's a, a bit of a difference there in on-road performance. And I just kind of missed that. So I wanted something that was maybe not a sport bike on the road, but at least a little bit more enjoyable on the road, especially in the twisties. The, for those of you that have been watching, you know I picked up a uh, Gen 2 KLR 650, rode that for four or five years. And then when the Tenere 700 finally came available in the US, I got a hold of one of the first ones and just have been enjoying the heck out of it. But after a couple trips up here, I honestly just wasn't really sure how I felt about it. It has more than enough on-road performance. It definitely smokes the KLR 650 off-road. If you guys missed those videos recently where my dad and I are testing both of these in Sandy single track and on actually a little mini motocross course, uh, definitely check those out if you're interested in one of these bikes. But I just really wasn't all that impressed with the ergonomics of it, and especially after I got my Gen 3. I just really kind of realized how uncomfortable this bike made me and you know obviously sure you can tough it out I had been and I could have done that but you could also change something up and try something different which is exactly what I did and again if you guys missed those videos I can put a playlist down in the description of all the stuff that I've done to the Tenere 700 and I will also have links to all the parts that I used down in the description those are Associate links have used those links to cost you anything extra, but Rocky Mountain ATV sends a little bit my way. Which I always appreciate. You can actually buy anything on Rocky Mountain ATV after you click on one of my links and they'll send me a little bit of the profit. I started doing these mods kind of this winter. Uh, I believe there was still a foot of snow on the ground when I kind of started working on it, and even when I put the video out for it. And in that video, I kind of explained the issues that I had with the bike and what I planned on doing with it. And I think I've got just about all of it done. There's actually two more things that I just ordered this week that I'll eventually do videos on. None of them are, are anything real substantial, but I think are things that will help me out. There's the trail. Ugh, probably should have got off and stretched. <laughs> So the first thing, and probably I guess the, the thing that I was most concerned with and most annoyed by was the handlebars. The stock T7 bars are probably really good for off-road, but they're way too straight. So I put these Tusk YZ high bend chub bars on here. These provide just a little bit more sweep, which means basically the, the angle that the bar comes back at you at. So my wrists aren't cranked in so much. Woo! On my four or five hour rides, you wouldn't think that that would make that much of a difference. And if you're a bigger guy, broader shoulders, longer arms, maybe it's not an issue. I have seen people that say that the T7 stock bars are perfect for them. But for me and for, woo, at least a couple other people that I've seen down in the comments and on forums and stuff, it can be quite painful. And if you only ride for an hour or two, it's not going to be a big deal, I don't think. But like I said, on the long rides and on, woo. Uh, on weeks where you're doing more than one ride, maybe two, three, four rides, oh boy, a week. Gotta get on the gas. Best way to run, go around a corner on a T7 is sideways. 
when you're doing a lot of riding consecutively, uh, for me anyways, it really, really kind of started to, to grind on me and I was not enjoying myself on this bike. So switching these bars out, I think has made a huge difference. I won't really know for sure, I guess, until I'm on my way home today, because, woo, like I said, I don't even have two hours on the, on the bike yet. So we'll check in on that later. Uh, so far, so good. Definitely happy with them. Video in the description for that if you want to see what that all entails. Uh, I did actually at the same time put the the Tusk Deflex Adventure handguards on here, and I do really like these. But one thing about them is they do not have a whoo, bar and weight on them. And I'll, whoa, on the way up here, I was actually just kind of noticing when I was doing some higher speeds that the bars did start to vibrate a little bit. And honestly, I do not remember how they felt with the bark busters that had the, the bar and weights on them. So maybe I'll see if I can get one of the sets of bar and weights that I've got at home on here and see how that does. I think we'll go that way. The next thing that kind of made me a little bit more uncomfortable on this bike than my Gen 2 or now my Gen 3 KLR650 was the, not so much the seat height, because the seat heights are actually all fairly similar, but the width of the seat, and this is probably repetitive for the, the guys that have seen these videos before, but is an important thing to mention and uh, to consider when you're looking at this bike versus something else. Because this seat is so wide, and this is not the stock seat anymore, this is the Seat Concepts woo, Comfort Low. Uh, but because the, the seat in the bike in general is so wide, your legs kind of have to go out before they go down. And that really gives you a little bit less confidence as far as being able to get the ground when you need to. And again, if you're taller, probably not gonna be an issue either way. Now when I, woo boy, bumpy. When I first switched the stock seat out for this one, ah man, I could not tell whether or not it helped me get the ground at all. Now if you if you slide off to the side like this, or I guess I should do that way now, can you see? If you slide off like that, then that kind of eliminates some of that wide, wide seat effect. I still do not have my ABS turned off. What am I doing out here? <laughs> Getting a little excited to get on the trail apparently. It does feel good to be up here again. This is the first time I made it up here this year. Whoa! Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. Do the right thing. Wish you could do that on the fly. When are they gonna make that a voice command? What the heck was I saying? Woo! Oh boy, that's a deep one. <laughs> T7 soaks it right up. This seat, I, I think, has kind of broke in a little bit for me, and watch out for you TVs. And that definitely has made me a lot happier. I, I feel like I can get to the ground just a little bit easier, which, you know, I mean, if you're spending $300 on the seat to just get a hair closer to the ground, I, I don't know that it's gonna be worth it. The other thing with the stock seat is I wasn't really all that comfortable on it. It wasn't terrible, it, it broke in a bit too, and definitely softened up a little bit however like I said once I'd get to kind of like the fourth fifth maybe sixth hour of a ride I wasn't all that comfortable on it and I think this one now again that it's broken in a little bit and because it's a bit flatter and wire towards the back and kind of almost cups your butt a little bit it, it does seem like it is a lot better again we'll kind of get get into that a little bit more I guess we'll see how how I'm feeling when I've got a few more hours on it. I guess I'm not gonna sit on it at all when we're off road, that's okay. Gotta get up on the pegs, right? Whoa, that's some sand. T7 don't care. I really should've put my goggles on. I'm actually not 100% sure they're in this bag. You'd think having three motorcycles would be so nice, but I have to say, making sure that everything is in the bike that you're taking and everything's together and whoa keeping them all maintained and cleaned and chains 
lubed up and everything can kind of be a bit of a task. I spent my whole night last night washing bikes and cleaning and oiling chains. That's all right. Can't say I mind. And I've got to say, as always, thank you to all you guys that have been supporting me, both through comments, like buttons, that sort of thing, and watching the videos. And well, of course, especially to those that have signed up for the Patreon, really do appreciate that. If you guys haven't heard, I am trying to turn this into more than just a pastime for myself. I really love making these videos and I love having the opportunity to, to ride bikes like the T7 and the Gen 3 KLR. And I want to continue to do stuff like that for you guys. Woo! So if you're enjoying it and you feel like I'm providing you at least $12 worth of entertainment every year, then hey, don't be, don't be shy. Check out the Patreon or at least consider the signing up for my, my Patreon for is there a stop sign there? I don't think so. For at least a dollar a month. It gives you early ad-free access to the videos and early access to information. Woo! Patrons already know this and actually I did sneak it into a video, uh, the last video, but woo! My wife and I are expecting another new little member of the family here any day now. Of course, our last little guy was a little late on arrival, so next one might be two, but we are just super excited and cannot wait to have her out in the world. But I'm sure as most of you know, things are a little hectic. hectic. I saw my signal light on. Oh my gosh, you guys didn't tell me. A little hectic with a, yo, a newborn and a toddler. Woo. However, I'm still gonna try to get at least one video out a week, if not more than that. Woo, that's Bumby and Sandy. Woo, ooh, that T7 feels good on landing. I cranked up my compression damping. Oh man, I think it's only a few clicks out from as hard as it can get on the front. I don't remember where the rear's at. The rear's pretty hard too. And maybe that's not the most comfortable thing for, for the bumps and the, the washboard sand, but sure does make those jumps fun. Ooh. What else did I do to this bike? Oh, the, the so the trip actually that kind of broke the camel's back and, and made me want to, need to uh, make some improvements to this bike so it would be more comfortable for me and make me happier on these types of adventures, oh! was a trip that, actually the last trip that my dad and I took up here last year which ended up being I think like almost a six hour ride by the time we got home we were riding home in the dark and it got pretty cold I think it was I don't know if it ever got below 40 but it was pretty chilly that's Fahrenheit so getting close to freezing and we do that quite a bit I, I ride a lot when it's cold I ride when there's snow on the ground look at that how pretty gotta mind the whoops though and the big whoops Woo! I stuck the tusk heated grips on here again there's a video for that in the playlist I'm not gonna point it out but it is the little red and blue high low switch underneath the dash uh, and those have been working awesome for me I think I'm gonna switch the grips out so a little bit more of the heat gets to my hand these kind of plasticky things are not only not very comfortable but also don't seem to transfer the heat very well look at that what a beautiful place to ride if you guys have never been up here and you ever get the opportunity to, this is a an awesome place to ride. This is basically what I compare any other trail or area that I ride to with such a cool spot. Camera does a darn good job capturing it, but there's nothing like being here. I guess the other thing I suppose that I should mention that I that I ordered is a new windshield. I get a good amount of buffeting right kind of in my face so I'm hoping a little bit taller of a shield is gonna help me out so that'll be the the two things that I'll be making videos on in the next couple weeks here whenever they show up and I get the chance to test them out look at that how cool But the grip heaters themselves are a little bit tricky to install if you don't have any wiring background or tools or anything. 
there are definitely much simpler kits out there that are complete plug and play but I did actually do these in a way where I could technically plug them directly into a plug on the bike so that was kind of smooth I am definitely happy to have them on here of course actually do I have them on I do have them on <laughs> in the low setting which doesn't really seem to do that much maybe with different grips on here that'll let that heat through a little bit better again but I don't know I think the low could be a little higher it's like they're almost not even on boy that sure is nice that throttle actually can get you out of trouble rather than into it like the KLR1 does I mentioned that a little bit at the end of the last video that this thing has and I do have the EC, ECU retune from uh oh Whoa. I cannot think of it two wheel dyno works in Washington definitely highly recommend it a little bit pricey not something you need to do uh, but does have some nice features and uh, one of them being the throttle response and th this bike uh, the, the throttle response because of the ECU tune and also the anti-squat rear on this thing really 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 makes this bike very responsive in the handling with uh, when you're trying to steer with the back tire oh cool well the trees are going up and I can't really see the the deep valley there beautiful area whoa give that quite enough gas Yeah, one thing that I do not love about the anti-squat rear is when you're riding over bumpy stuff like this and you're on the gas, it seems like it really makes it shatter a lot. And I think that's just because the, the suspension and the anti-squat are kind of fighting each other. Whoa, those are some big rocks. Boy, it handles it all nice though. It's really just the noise. It doesn't seem like it affects the overall performance of it all. Did I still not turn the ABS off? Oh no, I did. Whoa, that was a little sideways. I gotta say, these bars feel so nice standing up. I feel like maybe a little bit more sweep, and, and I guess we'll see how I feel when I'm on my way back. I feel like a little more sweep may have been better for the longer days, but boy, off-road, man, I, I don't know. I don't think I'd want them any farther back. Maybe I'd, I could do with a, a hair more and still not even notice it, but boy, do they feel good standing up. This bike just in general feels good standing up. I think this is my favorite spot. It is. There was the bottom. Woo! T7 handles that marvelously, though. Here's some sand. If you guys are going to come ride these trails and you've never been here before, I would exercise extreme caution. There are definitely some sections like that where there's a real nice jump and then a, a real nice sharp turn that if you miss, you go right into the woods. <laughs> ah. yeah, I'm not displaying it very well, but what I was saying earlier is that when you get into a situation like that where you're kind of riding the center line and you want to sort of cut over, you just blip the gas and turn the bars a bit and Ten rail points you right where you want to go. Of course, you got to have the nerve to do it, though. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I think some whoa softer grips will, grips will be nice when I'm squeezing the bars this hard. Whoa! It won't won't hurt so bad. <laughs> won't burn my hands out so quick. Kind of getting to the point in the ride where I think it's time to start slowing down a little bit. Uh, I think we'll shut the cameras down and I'll pick back up after I'm out of the woods and after I've got a few more road miles put on. Whew. There's gravel. Can't beat that. It's supposed to be a road ride on the way home, but 
I don't think any of you will mind, right? I did hit a couple roads already where I was doing about 60, and it seems like at 55, these bars are actually completely, well, maybe not completely, but very, very smooth and have very, very little noticeable vibration unless you really clamp down on them. But as soon as you hit at just like 58, 60, 4,500 RPM, then the bars seem to pick up a little bit of a buzz. And like I said, I, I don't know if a bar end weight would help that or would stop it completely. Really don't remember. Uh, maybe I'll see if I can find a set and stick them on here and try it out eventually. As far as wrist comfort goes, I'm not gonna lie, both of my wrists, mostly my throttle side, are a little bit sore. And it's not even really my wrist, it's actually kind of like my tendons in my forearm and I'm gonna attribute that mostly to the wood cutting and stacking that I was doing last week and maybe reefing on the bars a little bit harder than I should have been when we were off-road today I, I don't I don't think I can fault the actual bend of the bars at all I don't think having them swept back would really help that much more uh, maybe minimally but honestly I, I just I don't think so I think anytime you can have your hands out in front of you up on a handlebar for you know, over three hours, they're gonna start to get, you know, maybe a little bit uncomfortable. And I, I don't know if there's any avoiding that other than actually stopping and taking breaks once in a while, which I should probably get better at. One very important thing to mention though, is that when I would have problems originally with the stock bars, when I would crank my wrist this way after riding or even during riding, the pain would be very evident. As soon as I would do that, I could tell that whatever joints in there that are kind of mashing up against each other would not be excruciating, but definitely not be comfortable. And neither of my wrists hurt at all when I do that. Actually, it kind of feels good to, to move them around a bit like that. So I think this is something totally separate. Don't think it's the bars. Definitely would highly recommend the YZ High Bend. Look at that. Cows are out enjoying the sun. What is it, 79 degrees. Beautiful day. Glad not to be sitting in a truck on the way home. It's nice to enjoy it on the bike all the way from start to finish. Uh, one thing that I maybe should mention, and uh, you have to kind of take this with a grain of salt because I have not ridden with them, but they do actually have a, I think it's an ATV high or mid bar that I'm actually gonna stick on the KLR, but that I think has a fairly similar bend to this, might be swept back a little bit more, but they're also quite a bit higher, which might be really nice. I don't know how that would work as far as, uh, I think your, your brake, line is the one that would kind of be the limiting factor maybe your throttle cables too i'm not sure how any of that would work out i think it would be okay but don't quote me on that these bars are are so inexpensive i mean there's almost not a reason not to at least try something else if you're having problems but i'm super happy with these definitely worth all the effort uh like i said i've got that video it's really not too big of a deal i know people get kind of nervous about switching bars out because they think they've got to drill holes in them for the little locating pins in here I would not do that. I mean, maybe that's the right way to do it, but I know a lot of people, myself included, just nip those off and then that makes adjusting everything a lot easier and it takes the stress out of trying to pick a spot that you're gonna be stuck with. So I would definitely say go for new bars if you if you think that would help you out. Now, as far as the seat goes, I have shifted around on it a little bit, but honestly, I, I think this has gotta be way more comfortable than the stock seat, just having that wider section for your butt to sit on. I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm hanging off the seat at all. There's there's plenty of cushion and comfort there for me. I don't think I would want it any softer. And I kind of mentioned that to begin with that it felt kind of hard. I think it did soften up a little bit, but honestly, I mean, I think having, having support is just as important as having the shape. And I mean, I think, whoa, that's kind of a quite the, uh, quite the lip there. So got tire pressure. Cows laying in the sun. If you're looking for something that's gonna get you lower to the ground, this'll do it. I don't think that in itself is worth $300 if you can deal with the seat height as it was. But I do definitely like it. I'm glad it's on here. Uh, it does seem more comfortable. And uh, I think just the overall shape of it puts you in a better spot. I am happy that I put in the effort and the money to make this thing just a little bit more comfortable on these longer rides and I, I think I definitely succeeded in that so 
Again, make sure you check all the links down in the description. If you use those, it will help me out, help me make more videos like this, and I do appreciate that. Other than that, guys, take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out, enjoy this beautiful world anytime you can, and uh, until next time, see ya.